I wanted to buy the vertical spit roast for this dish, but then I thought, you know what? Most people don't have it at home. Plus, if I buy one more kitchen gadget, I might be thrown out of this house. Because women love it when you cook for them, up to the point where they step on the scale and then you're enemy number one. Anyway, today we're gonna try to be as authentic as possible, but when it comes to the meat, we're gonna marinate it, we're gonna slow cook it, it's gonna be falling off the bone, tender and juicy. Let's do it. For a maximum flavor, we will go with as many fresh spices as possible, starting with one tablespoon of cumin, one star anise, two teaspoons of black peppercorns, quarter of a teaspoon of fenugreek, one teaspoon of fennel seeds, a small cinnamon stick, five cardamom pods, and five cloves. If you substitute fresh spices with the pre-made stuff, you, you gotta be a little bit more generous to compensate. All right, next is one tablespoon of paprika, half of a nutmeg freshly grated, one tablespoon of sumac, two and a half teaspoons of sea salt, 40 grams or two thirds of a cup of roughly chopped cilantro, for those who absolutely hate cilantro, first, why? And second, just go with parsley. All right, 120 ml or half a cup of olive oil, four crushed garlic cloves, 25 grams or one ounce of grated fresh ginger. And finally, 60 ml or quarter of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Toast all the fresh spices on medium high heat for about two minutes until they start getting brown and their aroma start to fill up the room or until a nosy roommate or a neighbor shows up. Grind them while they're still hot and then let them cool down. Mix all the ingredients and let's go prepare the meat. I'm using this beautiful shoulder blade that is roughly two kilos or four and a half pounds. This cut has everything, plenty of tender meat, nice fatty layer outside and inside a big bone right in the middle. So with the fat layer facing up, make 1.5 centimeters or two thirds of an inch deep cuts through the fat and the meat. Flip to the back and make some small punctures. All of this will allow the marinade to seep in. Now we use our marinade to give the lamb a gentle shoulder massage. Go deep and cover every bit of it. Be generous with the marinade, try to use it all. Cover and marinate in the fridge for at least three hours or overnight if you can. With the fatty side up, cook the lamb shoulder in a preheated oven at 180 Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes without cover. After that, add 360 ml or one cup and a half of hot water, lower the temperature to 160 Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit, cover and cook for three hours while basting the meat at least once an hour. Now on the side, make a tahini cream by whisking 150 grams or two thirds of a cup of tahini paste with one crushed garlic cloves, quarter of a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of lemon juice and 120 ml or half a cup of cold water. We will also make a traditional tomato and cucumber salad by mixing a generous drizzle of olive oil with half a tablespoon of lemon juice and one eighth of a teaspoon, also known as a generous pinch of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Add 150 grams or two thirds of a cup of tomatoes, same amount of cucumbers, mix it well, and garnish with a pinch of parsley. Now that your meat is ready, transfer it into a separate tray and make sure that it doesn't end up in the floor because you're so flimsy. This at least shows that the meat is so tender that it's falling apart. 
Anyway, if you have a lot of juices left, reduce them in the oven for a couple more minutes. Try to impress people by breaking up the hot meat with your hands, just to realize you're not as tough as you think and you just switch to forks. I mean, the meat slides right off the bone, it's really tender, it's really soft, and it's time to roll. You can go traditional. Tahini cream, lamb, pickled turnip, and some parsley. And that's it. Roll and set aside. And by the way, if you want to make your own pickled turnip, I have a link for you. My personal favorite is tahini cream, lamb, harissa, and some pickled red onions. Take your shawarma rolls, dip them in that sauce we had left, and press it with the panini maker or just in a frying pan. And hear that beautiful sizzle. Flavors from the inside, flavors from the outside. It's genius, it's delicious. Serve on a platter with some more meat, our tomato and cucumber salad, hand cut fries, some olives, more pickled turnips, some pepperoncinis, drizzle some more tahini cream, and some parsley, and just enjoy. And that was it for me today. As beautiful as it looked, it tasted better. So I hope you make this at home. Well, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. I'll leave you all the ingredients right below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.